Art, what about for you, burnout? In all your years of a pastor, mm-hmm. have you experienced seasons of burnout? And if so, what are what are some healthy tips for all of the young pastors that might be listening? Uh, honey, have I experienced? Is that even a strong enough statement? Um, Ooh, what's the right word if burnout isn't strong enough? No, it was it was serious, debilitating, dangerous clinical depression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so triggered by, or is that just something you've wrestled with throughout your life? You know, in retrospect, I realized, oh, this is kind. This this, this has been planted in me all along. Mm. The melancholy or thinking and wondering, but it wasn't the, the when I was a church planter. That work was so demanding, and I wasn't smart enough to know how to have boundaries. Yeah. And I was also trying to prove myself, so I'm not going to fail. Because if I fail, if I don't get this thing going, then I'm, um, you know, I'll be a failure. And I just was not mature enough to know how foolish that, that was. Um, but it resulted in me being unable to achieve the goals that I'd set myself for, for myself. That I thought were non-negotiables. They yeah. weren't, but I thought they were. And my reality and my non-negotiables were never going to be able to coexist. And so what happened, instead of me saying, then I'm going to loosen the non-negotiables. So I didn't think that was an option. So what actually broke was me. And, um, and so I, my quick answer would be, oh, the pastorate and church planning did that. But it didn't. I did that by not being wise enough and mature enough to realize I don't, I don't have to get this church up to this size or I don't have to do that. Uh, there are worse things than not accomplishing that. And what? then I snapped. So for several months, uh, I was had to be away from the church completely, and mm-hmm. my personality changed. I mean, it's it's still different. Um, when you s- talk about that a little bit. Describe what was going on when you say you you had Snapped. to be away from the church for a little bit. Like, yep. Yep. W- what was happening there? What what did that look like? I was trying to figure out how to take my life. Without... But at the time, you're leading a church plant. It's his first first senior pastorate. First yeah. senior pastorate, and you're and, and it's a church plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. You went to the major and leagues. He was in, <laughs> right, right. How old were we? Thirty mid thirties. Yeah, yeah, good move. Wait right, to straight to the majors, right out of high school. <laughs> tart, tart. Um, and so, so you're doing those two things, and now <clears throat> you need to go and have a conversation. I'm assuming with some leadership of the church that says, "Hey, guys, I need to take a break." No, I wasn't even smart enough to do that. So I was thinking, I'm not telling anybody about this. I'm just going to gut it out. And I don't, I don't know if I sh- even told you about it. No, I didn't at first. So my church chair who was a good friend, um, figured out that something was wrong yeah. and challenged me. And I finally talked to him. I said, but don't tell anybody. We'll work it out. And he said, you, you're crazy. He was the head of Youth for Christ in our area of, of Portland. And he said, you've got to tell, you've got to talk to Brenda, and you've got to get some help. We'll get you some help. Yeah. So at first I wasn't going to tell anybody. And then they said they wanted me to get some therapy. I'm not getting therapy. That's the same as admitting that you lost. Sicilians yeah. don't get therapy. Cursed forever. I'll be branded <laughs> forever. You know, so just reeking with unhealthy insecurity, mm. trying to prove myself. Just so. And he grew up with this. Just suck it up. Just live with it. You can suck deal it with up. it. That old school. My parents were healthier than that. So it wasn't. I won't want you but to it was in it. the culture. It was just like embedded yeah, in the yeah. culture of just mm-hmm. like you're be a man. And it was in the church culture. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. even more so. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Don't let Jesus down. But it was absolutely stupid and dangerous, and put my whole family at risk. Mm. When I look back on it. But it was a doctor, a friend who was a doctor that you saw that said you need to take time off. Yeah, time off. No, David Blessing. Mm-hmm. I went to this trusted physician. Um. Uh, that we knew from our the church that planted our church, and you no, know, he said you are so scarred, mm. you're you're done with the pastorate. Mm. You need to get away from the church, and you can never be a pastor again. I don't see you ever recovering. Whoa! Mm-hmm. And uh, th- and I said to him, that's not an option. Here's my thinking again. So yeah. It's not an option. I'm I have a calling that will not let me go. 
I wish I had a different calling. I wish I could sell shoes. <laughs> Anything. Any who would what idiot would ever want to be a pastor? This is like an impossible job. I yeah. still think I still and, think that. <laughs> I confess I think well, so. I, I don't think that way anymore. I only have a little seasoning of that. And yeah, yeah. It's it's tougher now than it's ever been, I think. Yeah. These days. Really tougher now. The the challenge rabbit trail. It's okay. So so the challenges of of being a pastor are going up. The the challenge is to be able to think, to deal with some of the things culture's throwing at us without wounding people, and to manage the differences of opinion theologically in the church. Some of them are radically right, some of them are radically left, whatever whatever, yeah. whatever terminology you want to use. I agree with Zach. Those are unfortunate. You have to categorize people. But um, anyway, the 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 Theological, and intellectual, and cultural challenges are more, as complex as they've ever been and grown. Mm. Yeah. Uh, on the one hand. And then the commitment to formal theological training that could help you be a good enough thinker to know how to stay faithful to Scripture and still caring for people, which, by the way, is being faithful to Scripture. Mm. Um, the, the challenges are going up, and the preparation to meet those challenges is going down and it's the church's fault because they're accepting pastors and leaders who are insufficiently trained uh and that's just a train wreck waiting to happen Oof. and that was then it was hard to be a pastor this yeah. is now it's even m more difficult yeah so anyway that have i had seasons of burnout burnout doesn't quite touch it you were done i was but done then... and wanting to be done and I remember logically thinking, if I take my life and get out of this awful vacancy of any emotions, that's what depression felt like to me. It was like if, like there was this big emotional syringe with nothing in it, and you put the needle in your heart, and then you sucked everything out, all the emotions out. It wasn't just bad emotions. It was no emotions. Mm. It was deadness. Whoa. Uh, it was awful, awful nightmare. Um, I thought, but I was healthy enough to say, if I take my life, that scars innocent people. My children, my wife, who's been good to me, she just doesn't deserve this, and my parents. Yeah. I love my parents. We both love my parents. Uh, I can't do that to them. But I remember Brenda being essential for me recovering because she she was come here, let's figure this out. I'll help you. What do you need from me? And how are you feeling? And it's okay. And uh, let's get you help. And Brenda, was that scary for you to see him like that? It was. And it was. Um, he was supposed to take six months off work, I think. Six months away from the church. And, and they funded it. They paid <clears throat> me. And... Um, I think after three months, he started going back. It was part-time. but <clears throat> Against my doctor's recommendation. But mm -hmm. they, I couldn't stand it. They couldn't afford. Anyway, go ahead. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, it was just, I mean, it was good for you to be able to take that time. Mm -hmm. um, but you, then you felt guilty about being away from the church. And so it, it was scary, but it was, you know, I mean. Um, my faith is what got us, got me through that. Had and you, I looked really good in my jeans. <laughs> and there was that. <laughs> had you been? You that was a long curly, time ago, that Art. Curly had the big old afro. <laughs> <laughs> when I see that photo or those photos of you, I'm like jealous. I wish that I could have that hair. <laughs> well, that, that was wait a second. I'm jealous too. <laughs> Amazing. That was one of my rapid fire that I totally forgot, Brenda. What what cartoon character <laughs> did Art represent way way back when? Cartoon character, oh or boy. or any <laughs> real oh, or fictional? Mr. I don't Conte. even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from Welcome Back, Cotter. What? Oh God, I know, yeah, I know S you mean. Way back. Are we name? aging ourselves? Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, way, yeah, nobody anyway. knows what you're talking about. I do, but we'll I can't with remember it. the name. No. We do. We yeah. know exactly what you're talking. You about. You stole Mr. our music. Mr. Steal Cotter. our TV shows too. Oh, Mr. Cotter. Mr. Cotter. Yeah. It was scary, but we were making progress together. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an excellent therapist 
Mm. Excellent. Not just some read these verses. Yeah. You know, really brilliant, uh, psychologically <clears throat> tra- professionally trained. Therapist. Not a. Was Art, also, have you prayed about this? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you could have give it over God. to God. Have you, you given know? this all to Jesus? <laughs> yeah. Have you asked him to just take it away? So I went on meds. That really helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I just recently went b- back on a low dose of the med the, of uh, Prozac that I was on before. And because I was starting to feel a little bit of hmm, anxiety at night. Yeah. And I don't, I'm, I'm not ashamed. Of, I want to get this taken care of. I don't want to go back where I was. Uh, and then I had a great therapist and a super spouse. And I had, I, it actually worked out for good for me to rethink my faith. Mm. Say, wait a minute. What if, what if some of the expectations I have of God and some of the things I think I have to get done in the church for him to like me, yeah. be proud of me, and all, what if that's all bankrupt? And am I free to rethink that? And so, God, what's success really look like then? Mm. What's, I think I got it wrong. What do, you, what do you really need from me? And I began to believe the idea that I can't do anything to make him more proud of me or perform for him, which is an old tape. Everybody's yeah. heard that already, but I experienced it in a transformative way. And I now believe the depression was a gift. I don't want to go so far as to say God caused it, but it's okay with me if he did. Hmm. I don't, I don't necessarily go that far, but it happened and he definitely used it. And I wouldn't, <clears throat> I like who I am better post hmm. because it happened than the guy I was before it happened. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Years but I wouldn't later. want anyone to ever have to experience that. It was a nightmare. Yeah. And years later, he wrote an article that was in our denominations magazine called the monster in my closet. And it was about depression and how it, yeah. it sneaks its way out. It tries to get, it just gets to do whatever it wants and come on you whenever it wants to. And there's no reason. Because you look and you say, well, wait a minute. You have a great wife. You have a great family. You, you, yeah. You, you what do you got to complain about? Yeah. I said, that's not the point. This is like, it's like going to surgery and they put the anesthesia in. You can say, I don't want to fall asleep, but you're falling asleep. Because it just gets to tell you what you're doing. Yeah. It's it's not, not logical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. That's that's so good. It it's such a life is complicated, and it sounds like it was a multi front war for you fighting depression. Like you mentioned the meds, you mentioned the counseling, which was probably like real world <laughs> counseling plus counsel. plus you know biblical perspective. Mm-hmm. I I had friends that went through marriage counseling, and they went to a biblical mar- marriage counselor, which it I don't want to like create a straw man here, but the way he described it, it sounds like, well, what does the Bible say your role is? And what does the Bible say your role? And it's just like this cookie cutter, just do those things and your marriage is fixed. And it's, that's not the way life works. So the multifaceted approach to it, it seems like would be a, a handy bit of advice for somebody that s- might be like, oh, maybe, maybe that's what's happening with me. Because it probably you probably miss a bunch of warning signs leading up to mm. the break. That <clears throat> next time, like obviously now you start to feel it. Now you you're catching it ahead of time. Maybe yeah. I'll, anxiety- even tell, I'll tell my wife. I'm, I'll tell Brenda. I'm starting to I'm starting to feel a little anxiety at night, mm. but only at night. What do you think? You know, help mm-hmm. me manage this. Or she's like, you you know. The Dodgers yeah. pitching is weak. <laughs> <laughs> weak. Weak. Turn the TV weak. off. <laughs> they don't even make it up to weak. 